Freedom Park, together with the Nelson Mandela Foundation and EMS Productions, are hosting a public lecture on the anti-apartheid activist at LC September. Let's uh, take you live there now. Uh, as, as the further research we did, one looks into her papers, documents, um, you discover that this was, was a woman on a mission and she was not prepared to be silenced, um, despite warnings that... Um, you know, um, she was under threat. Um, she, 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 she refused to desert her post, essentially. And she stayed there, um, uh, unfortunately, to the bitter end. I think for me, as the filmmaker, one of the most poignant things for me when, when going through the research and documentation on Dalsy was, was, was reading, like, her banning order. And, and, and when you see these things in black and white, it's like kids' home. It's the, the, the minutiae. Of, of the paperwork, um, you know, pro pro prohibiting you from any social gathering, prohibiting you from any political gathering, prohibiting you from any gathering of pupils or students. I mean, Dulcie was a teacher. Can you imagine what this would have done to her when, when she was serving her banning order? Um, this is after serving five years in prison. Another one, permission to be visited by a friend. She had to seek permission to... I mean, it just, it boggles the mind. I'm, I'm seeking permission that uh, it's redacted the name of Woodside Road Lansdowne visits me at the said residential address. I shall be very grateful if my application is, is successful. Um, I think that just for me hits, hits you know, uh, at, at, at the times that, that was living in. And we tend to forget that today. Um, her, when, she, when she left, um, on the one-way exit permit, she was instructed to take the most direct route uh, to the harbour. I mean, that's that's how almost reminds you of of the of Nazi Germany and that type of paperwork. And you know, um, so so yeah. Uh, when you watch the documentary, you get a you get an inkling into all this. And um, I hope uh, um, you know South Africans can watch this documentary to learn about our past. But also, we also talk about the present um, and, and the situation we currently exist at the moment, that exists at the moment. Um, you know, you'll get to see comrades of Dalsi's, old friends, um, colleagues, uh, family. Um, I, you know, it, it's, 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 it's over two parts. So, so there's one part this week and one part next week. Um, also in my research, I, I, um, I kept stumbling upon a name, and that name was um, Evelyn Kroenig, our keynote speaker. Um, uh, and, and I got very curious. I, I, I wanted to know more about Evelyn and, um, and the work she was doing. I mean, it, it seemed that this was a very determined person um, trying to find answers to the killing of Darcy September. So lo and behold, um, I find that Evelyn Kroenig is actually living in South Africa. Um, so, so for me as a filmmaker, it was, it was, it was a really uh, strong moment that, you know, I didn't have to go searching in Holland and, and Evelyn was right here. And, and that's when I made the decision to tell the documentary through Evelyn's eyes. So the documentary unfolds through Evelyn's eyes as we seek to know the killers of Darcy September. So... Um, I'm, I'm, I'm really proud and happy to have Evelyn kick off the annual um, Darcy September lecture. Um, and and, and uh, I think that if we, if we all as South Africans can collectively tomorrow think back uh, on Human Rights Day to the sacrifices that South Africans have made, um, it will just make this country a better place. Thank you. Thank you, Enva. Thank you for your presentation. Thank you very much. We're now going to hear from a family representative, Nicola Aranze. Nicola is the youngest niece of Dulce. That is, her mom is Dulce's youngest sister. Nicola, if I can ask you to take about four minutes so that you can catch up uh, with our keynote address. Nicola, over to you, please. Thank you, President Darita. I'll, I'll try to do that. I think firstly, we, the family of Darcy September, would like to thank the management of Freedom Park 
also EMS Productions and the Nelson Mandela Foundation for hosting this public lecture in honor of our Aunt Dulcy. Now there are many sides to Dulcy September. Um, she was my aunt, the woman we are honoring today. She was an anti-apartheid activist, political prisoner, freedom fighter, struggle hero. That is a public side. But there is also the private, the more private side as daughter, sister, aunt, friend, and teacher. Born in Maitland on August the 20th, 1935, Dulcie September grew up in Athlon, which is also the suburb where she started a career as a teacher. And it was at Bridgetown Primary School that she was arrested on October the 7th, 1963, and detained without trial at Rulon Street Prison. In April 1964, she and her co-accused were found guilty on the principal charge of conspiracy to commit acts of sabotage and incite acts of politically motivated violence. Dulcie was sentenced to five years imprisonment. On her release, Dulcie was placed under house arrest. Her activities prescribed by a five-year banning order which not only prohibited her from political activity, but also from practicing a profession as a teacher. In 1973, as a banning order drew to a close and being unable any longer to bear the frustration of living under house arrest, she chose to leave the country. Dulcie applied for a permanent exit visa. And on December the 19th, 1973, the security police accompanied Dulcy onto the boat that would take her to England and kept her in a cabin until a few minutes before the boat departed, when she was allowed on deck to greet her sister Stephanie, my mother, her brother-in-law and her nieces and nephews. Throughout her years in exile, Dulcy maintained contact with the family through letters, birthday and Christmas cards, and enjoyed a visit by my parents while in London in 1979. And 1979, that was the last time my mother saw her sister alive. While in London, she joined the ANC. Dulcie threw herself body and soul into the work of the movement and quickly won recognition for her contribution. In 1981, she was called to work full-time at the ANC's headquarters in Lusaka. And at the end of 1983, Dulcie was appointed as the ANC chief representative for France, Switzerland, and Luxembourg. About four years later, by 1987, it was evident that Dulcie had succeeded in putting together an effective anti-apartheid lobby in addition to a strong pro-sanctions and disinvestment campaign, in particular at that time, not only in France, but also in Switzerland and Luxembourg. She had succeeded in forging strong links with anti-apartheid pressure groups and left-wing politicians in all three countries. Her mission had become a serious threat, not only to the South African regime, but also to Europe's notorious and unscrupulous arms dealers. And then on March 29, 1988, aged 52, she was assassinated. At that time, we, the family, had no idea of all the work she had done, her achievements, what she was involved in, her plans, whom she knew. Her silence regarding these was her way of protecting us. Our Aunt Dulcie had fought against oppression and discrimination and stood for a just world for all, where the values of non-racialism and non-sexism are upheld, and she paid the ultimate price. So as we mark her life and death today, let us not forget all those who had also made the ultimate sacrifice and lost their lives in the struggle for a better South Africa. They too deserve to be remembered. And I thank you. Thank you, Nicola, for that captivating information on Dulcie. Thank you very much. Our keynote speaker is Evelyn Gronick. Evelyn 
is a journalist and the author of Dulcy September's biography. Without wasting time, we want to hand over to our keynote speaker, Evelyn Grunick. Evelyn, you have 10 minutes to try and squash in your presentation. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just to uh, make make one clarification, I, I, I do not aspire to be known as Estelle C. September's biographer. The biography still has to be written. I investigated uh, Delcy September's murder, and the result for me personally is that I wish I would have known her. But to write her biography, I should still get to know her a lot better. But what I do know is that Dulcie September, besides being a principled, ethical, honest, and very brave activist and ANC representative, she was a school teacher. It's very important, I think, to see her as such, that school teacher who cared for children, who wanted to educate children, even in a situation of oppression, wanted to educate even you know, the people who were not aware where their oppression came from, wanted to educate her nation, contribute to her nation. She left South Africa after having been banned from ever teaching again. But interestingly, during my research for the past 30, 33 years, um, I discovered that ANC comrades and friends who had known Delcy would still refer to her as a school teacher because Delcy did not accept shoddy work. She wanted people to do her homework. She got furious when you left unfinished business on your desk and you went to go to a tavern at 4, 4 p.m. This is important because how did I, a white person who is an anti-apartheid activist in Amsterdam, the Netherlands at the time, how do I even get to meet this very principled, strong person um, in a way, I think it was our homework, too, that led me uh, to cross her path, because we as activists in the Netherlands, um, we were shocked when she was assassinated with five bullets in her face in what we consider to be our backyard. Paris is 500 kilometers from Amsterdam. So we felt we should at least pay attention to that, investigate a little. And I was a journalist, I'm still a journalist, and I went to investigate. And I thought it was going to be easy. I thought it was going to be just one story about, you know, apartheid evil and this great woman who was murdered. But that was too simple. The Paris that I found in 1988 was not the Paris of the human rights, of the freedom, of the social justice, even if at the time a socialist party government was in power with its own anti-apartheid movement, Nogal. It was not the truth. The truth of France at that time was politics, self-interest, greed, uh, wanting to be friends with the old regime in Pretoria, but also friends with the new leaders who were coming in. It was 1988. There were changes afoot. Uh, diplomats, ANC diplomats and French diplomats and South African apartheid diplomats were all meeting British diplomats. There was all this big shot stuff going on. And in that circus, if I may call it like that, um, a lot was forgotten. And I think Delcy September worried about what was forgotten. Um, like the things we know, exiles were still in exile. Activists were still being killed in the townships uh, in Swaziland. There was a hell of a lot of homework. There was a hell of a lot of unfinished business. And Delcy September had stumbled, not first stumbled, then methodically and with a lot of capacity, capability investigated military nuclear collaboration between France and South Africa. It was a collaboration that was so high level, so important um, that France wanted to continue this with the new leaders. And they could not handle a woman. The silencing of Delcy September is such a red thread in that whole story. It wasn't just apartheid. It was also France in 1988 that silenced Delcy September because she was trying to point out, even to her own movement, guys, we must engage on this. 
this is like unfinished business that we have to know what we are doing. What kind of country are we inheriting? What kind of international partners, international deals are we dealing with? And it all happens behind my back. She actually fought with the socialist governing party in France, saying to them, why are you doing this behind my back when I'm supposed to represent the South African people here? They didn't listen. Even worse, her own ANC superiors in London did not listen because they were busy. They were busy with all these negotiations. I can still hear them say, yes, yeah, changes, changes, changes. We must, ah, we are busy, we're flying up and down. And in all that, Delcy September is phoning them, is trying to pass messages to them, underground style, because they are, these are not things you can talk about openly. She phoned them so many times. It was told to me by a crying ANC person at the time that they, she phoned us so many times and we didn't go. And now she's dead. It was a time of contracts, networks, top positions, big shots, uh, trying to be friends of big shots. And if that sounds familiar in the here and now, that is, I'm saying that intentionally. And she was told at the time, even by diplomats and journalists and socialists, that she was dumb. She should not raise those things. She should not talk about homework and unfinished business. She should have some wine and go with the flow. And she did not do that. And I think that's why she was killed. And the silencing of Delcy September even continues after her death in a way, because that narrative of apartheid killed the activist, the hero, but no context, no complexities, the simple single story, apartheid was bad and they did that, it stayed. I wrote about this a lot during the past 33 years. I didn't have the whole story yet. But little by little, as the story came in 1998, 2001, the first book in the Netherlands, um, then 2005, uh, that the publishers, Maggie Davy, held a lecture about what they had not been allowed to publish because the book was silenced by lawyers in 2005. Then 2013, I wrote more articles all along until the book that's called Incorruptible in 2018. All along, the narrative came back, apartheid death squads killed Delcy September simply because she was a black woman and she was an ANC member. And I think the biggest honor that we can pay to Delcy September and her struggle today is to finally get rid of that narrative, the simple single story, and see the complexities and understand that if Delcy September was alive today and would have pointed out a lot of corruption and a lot of people not doing their homework, she might actually, in some places like Free State and Pumalanga, KZN, she might be killed all over again. And it is that message where I end. Thank you. Thank you, Evelyn. Thank you for, for your presentation. Thank you very much. The book, The Incorruptible, the stories of the murders of Dulce September, Anton Labowitzki and Chris Hani is available on bookstores and also online. There is no doubt that Dulce September was a distinguished patriot of our country, a daughter of the soil, a committed and disciplined member of the movement, a humble servant leader of our people, a brave and courageous. Thank you for tuning in on this public lecture and thank you to all our speakers. Thank you very much. All right, uh, that is uh, the honoring of uh, Dulce September, apartheid uh, activist, the Freedom Park, together with Nelson Mandela Foundation and uh, EMS uh, Productions hosting uh, that public lecture on the apartheid uh, activist.